rock well, well, well. I like to know, are you really ready for some super dynamite soul? Peace, peace, peace. This is DJ Rock Revelation's number one DJ, and this is my man, Big Dave C. In the place to be. It's Saturday, 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 episode 19 of the Rockwell Radio Show. Man, it's Black History Month Day. Yes, sir. And I've been doing some digging around about this subject called Black History Month. I got my dashiki in the back. Man, bro, I got an African mask, and, you know, but I didn't want to bring it out for, the, out for this episode. But we got a lot to talk about. And this is going to be an interesting episode because the opinions discussed in this particular episode of the Rockwell Radio Show may not be considered a popular opinion. It's going to challenge what people think, D. And that's, that's what that's what Rockwell Radio is here to do is challenge what you think. This is not a group think operation, but before we get started, before we do any single solitary thing, we want to ask everybody who's watching, hit the like button, hit the share button, and above all, subscribe. We want you to subscribe so every time that we go live, you get notified. Hit the bell, hit the subscription. And it's right, a little thing right below where you can say subscribe here because it's going to be an interesting night tonight. Um, matter of fact, every if you're watching right now in the chat room, salute. You are a part of this show because this is going to be an open dialogue. And tonight we're going to do something we haven't done in quite a while. We are going to open the phone lines because we want to hear from you on the subject of does Black History Month still matter? We're going to open up the phone lines and we want to talk about it because there's quite a few things that exist where people are now questioning the validity, the purpose, the usefulness, the application of Black History Month. And what good is it? So we're going to ask our producer just to give us a quick background, a quick historical perspective of who or what is Black History Month? Dave? Gotcha. According to the website history.com, Origins of Black History Month. The story of Black History Month begins in 1915, half a century after the 13th Amendment abolished slavery in the United States. That September, the Harvard-trained historian Carter G. Woodson and the prominent minister Jesse E. Moreland founded the Association Association mm -hmm. for the Study of Negro Life and History, an organization dedicated to researching and promoting achievements by black Americans and other peoples of African descent. Now known today as the Association for the Study of African American Life and History, the group sponsored a National Negro History Week in right, 1926. Right. Mm -hmm choosing the second week of February to coincide with the birthdays of Abraham Lincoln and Frederick Douglass. The event inspired schools and communities nationwide to organize local celebrations, establish history clubs, and host performances and lectures. So, sounds reasonable, right? Yeah, it, 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 it sounds plausible that based on our history in America that there should be some degree of a study of our history and our contributions. Somebody saw a need to, to definitely impart that upon the, the country and the world. So they did that. And you know what? I think they were right. So again, before we dive in, before we dive in, 
we want you all to hit that like button, tag somebody, and subscribe. This is the Rockwell Radio Show. My name is DJ Rockwell, and on my right, your left is... Big Dave C. And we're going to have a really, really, really interesting conversation tonight. So what I want to do, Dave, I want to play a clip. It's a beautiful clip. It's a cute clip. It's going to take a look at what we teach our children about Black History Month. And they're going to come on and tell us what Black History Month means to them. They're going to come on and tell on us? Well, that too. (laughs) Right. (laughs) That too. So stand by and watch this. This is the DJ Rockwell radio show. Let's hear from our children on what Black History Month means to them. Hello. Black History Month is um, a commemoration, vocab word, for black activists, another vocab word, who took took their time out to go fight, um, fight for what, what they feel is right. Like Martin Luther King had a speech that violence is not the answer and no segregation. We celebrate black people that helped us change history. It reminds us to be strong even in politics. Oy. What matters is what, what's inside of you and how you act to other people. It doesn't matter if you're black, if you're white, should always celebrate it because you know the, the the struggles black leaders went through in order for you to be here right now. Even though we may have the different skin color, we're still the same type of people, no matter what. And a lot of people, they don't see me for who I am. They see my outside appearance, but they don't see what I have on the inside. It's very hard to grow up knowing that you're black and you have a lot of personal prejudice against you. I see it on the TV and I'm like, is that gonna happen to my brother? Is that, is that gonna happen to my dad? And I always have that in the back of my mind every time that I'm home and they're not home. Black history is important to me because I have to remember where I came from and I have to remember who came before me. Because you have to look at the things that Martin Luther King Jr., Rosa Parks, and um, Malcolm X did for us black people so people can't treat us unfairly because they think some type of relief. Because we're, we are all people and you need to stand up for our rights. There's still discrimination, there's still discrimination in all parts of the world, in all parts of the United States. We should still fight for what we believe and we should still fight for getting what's right. <laughs> Up. Now, weren't our babies beautiful? Always. Our, our, our children are beautiful. Matter of fact, man, let's give it up for the, for the children. I, I tell you what, man. I'm not mad at that. I'm, I'm, I'm not mad at that. I, I, I believe, matter of fact, I know that there is a practical purpose. In fact, I was out with dad today and I was having a, a conversation about what I was going to talk about. How's the old man doing? The old man is good. And, and, and Pops, are you watching? I'm a part of the club. Thank you now. <laughs> you know, um, He's good. And I said, tonight, Pop, we're going to discuss is black history relevant anymore? And he, of course, he is a man of the civil rights generation. Right. And he, he scoffed at the idea. Well, of course it is. And he gave a brilliant reason as of to why it'd be a detriment to forget where we've been. Why it'd be a detriment for us not to pass on this great legacy, this great history right. of where our people have been, what we've accomplished. And the fact that the enemies of black folks have worked mm-hmm extra hard to cover up what we've contributed to. So I think it's an error um, and and this seems to be a a no-brainer response that of course black history is relevant. So, but there's this other side of people 
that I didn't know about until I started doing research for this show. Right, what you get? That think the exact opposite. Mm. These had to be a bunch of white people, I'm guessing. These are people that look like you and I. <laughs> and some of them are people that we even respect. Mm. And I realized at that moment it wasn't quite a black and white, no pun intended, situation. It wasn't an open and shut case. So again, you're tuned into the Rockwell Radio Show. We warn you, if you haven't done so already, hit that like, hit that share button. And we're discussing a topic today, today that is bigger than hip hop. We're talking about the relevance of black history in 2021. Hit that subscribe button and share, share, share. Tag a friend. Because again, later on in the show, not very long from now, we're going to open up the phone lines and we want to hear from you. Is black history relevant? Does black history still matter? You know, what's, what's interesting with the clip you just ran of the children, you know, of course, that was beautiful. It's always beautiful to see our youth, our children, you know, learning something of substance and able to repeat it. But again, you know, with, with them being such at such an age, as you saw, at a certain point, they grow out of, you know, uh, mimicking, repeating, parroting what mom or dad teacher taught them and they start to grow into their own and a separation begins to happen mm. and I believe we still I, I think it's pretty evident and obvious that we still are you know very much experiencing that separation of youth to you know parents and elders once they get to a certain age and and I think that's the bigger issue here that that uh, I love to tackle someday Absolutely. In, in fact, um, matter of fact, let's, I want to share with the listening and watching audience some interesting quotes I found from some writers that offered a very interesting opinion that's going to lay the foundation for this conversation about is it still relevant? Does it matter? Today, let's look at one of them. Let's, let's go um, to the clip, Dave. I want to highlight this quote. Look at this. In one corner, advocates of Black History Month argue that a special month is needed to celebrate and recognize the achievements of Black Americans in a country where European history dominates historical discourse. In the other corner, hmm, Critics cast doubt that Black History Month is still relevant with the gains made in race relations, a black U.S. president, the most visible sign, and detractors charge it is detrimental in the long term to pigeonhole black history into a month-long observance. Hey, what's your response to that quote? By the way, that was Melinda D. Anderson, a writer for The Atlantic, and that was from February, just two years ago. I think you'll find that sentiment uh, very among a lot of people. You know, uh, the, the sentiment of pigeonholing, as she said, uh, black history into that that 28 ice cold uh, box. Uh, and, and with such few people, you only get so much time and, and you better run it in. And um, one thing that people I haven't heard many people talk about is not only do you need to keep it in this box, but don't go too far with the few people that we allow you to talk about. Don't bring up this person. Stay on that one over here. Keep it comfortably, comfortably black. Uh, I think that's one thing that uh, needs to be blown up as well. Let's let's go to the, the next quote. I want to share something with you all that we got from a writer named Ernest Owens. Ernest Owens of the Philadelphia Inquirer wrote this. As long as America continues to embrace Black History Month in its current state, we are implying that we are okay with this form of segregation. Mm. That one month is for Black people and the other 11 months are for everyone else. Commodifying racial groups in such a binary way condones the very racism that Black History Month attempts to combat. Black history is 
history, period. To treat it as anything separate is reductive and racist. We can rectify this disparity by canceling Black History Month. They respond to that. This respond to Ernest Owens. And saying the same thing, uh, just in different ways, just, you know, in different directions. Uh, we, we can't put it in a capsule and say that's okay. And then the rest of the, the year, it's not white history months or white history years. It's just history. It's normal. It, it's not because as long as we have to be marginalized in this one little area, in this one month, what are we to do for the rest of the time? Make sure that everybody else feels comfortable and nice and happy while we're still over here bubbling over about to explode with what we need for ourselves and what we need to know of ourselves. I, I tell you what, people, they raise an interesting argument here about if Black History Month is relevant in 2021, if it matters in 2021. We thought it was an open and shut case, but maybe it's not. Just maybe it's not. We want to play you another video clip right now where there are some people that make a pretty solid argument that black history should be canceled. Watch this. Um, one, now, there are a lot of people who would disagree with me. And that's okay. I mean, we're Americans, we can disagree. And we're all, we're all individuals. But there are people who will agree with me also. And I've been saying this now for 22 years. One of the things that will help us to, to advance into the 21st century, because we, we, we are behind the times, um, we need at this point to get rid of Black History Month. <laughs> Now, I know a lot of people listening are going to, like, freak out. Well, what's this guy talking about? Blah, blah, blah. Oh, just like there shouldn't be a Black History Month. You know, it, we're Americans, period. That's it. Are you saying there shouldn't be a Black History Month because there isn't a White History Month? Exactly. I don't want a Black History Month. Black History is American history. Black History Month has become detrimental to, to us, to all, all of us, white and black. And I'll tell you why. Yes, we needed it for a certain period of time because we had nothing. Um, but here's the problem. We only study black history in February. Let's look at what's been taught during Black History Month, because it certainly isn't all black history, since, you know, that would clearly take more than the 28 days of the shortest month of the year. Really, it seems to only be the stuff that doesn't make white people feel uncomfortable. I would argue Black History Month isn't really about black history. It's about only teaching the pacification of black people. I'm personally not a not a fan of Black History Month. Black History Month is a way to help people to at least try to deal with it for a month. I'm down for thinking of African history or black history as part of a world history as opposed to just being a month set aside for it. I think that that marginalizes, marginalizes it a bit. And each February, we study the same half a dozen people. Martin Luther King, Rosa Parks, Harriet Tubman, Booker T. Washington, George Washington Carver, and one or two other ones. By the time we get through half a dozen, up, oh, our month is over. We did our black thing. Let's move on. It was mentioned in that clip that uh, we only study black history during Black History Month. And uh, I, I can't argue with that because mainly of the way that it's presented to most of us. In school, we get introduced, okay, it's February, it's Black History Month. Now we'll go through these few people here, these few topics. And receiving it in school as a curriculum, as a lesson, thinking, oh crap, okay, there's gonna be a test on this. I can't wait to get through with it and be done with it. So after Black History Month, it's, it gets ejected with everything, just like all the other lessons in school. That's out of here. I'm done with it. So, and, and you know what? I, that, that, str that struck a memory. As a matter of fact, shout out to my man, Brother Jeff. Big, big Jeff said, yo, that background beat was thumping, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. We all JB fans. <laughs> he said, man, 
I'm black and I'm proud. I remember uh, Dave C. I, I went to a majority white high school in Missouri. And I remember us pushing for a Black History Month program. And at that time, before busing to these quote unquote better schools, such a program never happened at my high school. So we worked with the black counselor there at, I want to shout out to Parkway West, high school class 1991 salute, all the Longhorns, you know what to do. And if you were there, you remember this. The 1989 or 1988 Black History Month program that the black students of that high school got together to put on. And we were so boxed in into what we could discuss. Not that any white teacher said, no, you can't talk about this. We didn't know. <laughs> We didn't know. Didn't know that you didn't know. <laughs> we didn't know that there was more to discuss than Martin Luther King, George Washington Carver, Fannie Lou Hamer. There's a tactic in that. They, they may not say, don't talk about this person, this group over here. They may not downplay them, but they'll play up all those ones, the names you mentioned, and celebrate them so strong that you, you easily, we easily fall in line with sticking to a set group of people or, or topics and feel as though we've achieved what we were supposed to achieve. And again, man, let's remind people you are tuned in to the nation number one DJ, DJ Rockwell. This is the Rockwell Radio Show. We want you all to tag somebody, tell somebody. We want to make sure that they know that we're live here every Saturday at 7 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m., excuse me, 6 p.m. on the Central and 4 on the West Coast. But we want to hear from y'all, man. We don't want to talk too, too much. We want to open the phones and get your feedback. Let's do that. What, what did y'all think about what you heard? Do they have a legitimate argument? that black history either A, needs to be rebooted, retooled, or completely removed. Um, I was surprised personally, Dave, to see Talib Kweli. It's a bit surprising. We all respect and love Talib Kweli. We know he is quote unquote one of the conscious brothers um, who in his music has been kicking for a long, long, long time the relevance of what we've contrib contributed to the culture. But he says, yo, he's not in favor of Black History Month. Was he right? You can call in right now at 404-919-7399 to leave your comment or you can talk to us live. And if you're in the chat room, ask a question, have a comment. Shepard, we want to hear what you think. Does Black history matter today? Dave, I, I saw, I was having this conversation with my son earlier. And uh, my son is 19 years old. Y'all know my son, Sadiq. And he had an interesting perspective. And I'm finding that the more young people I talk to, they're not making the connection of the necessity of black history and current day affairs. Hmm. In fact, he, he said these kind of words. It's hard to, to distinguish the um, relevant black history scholars with all the hoteps out there. <laughs> so what we're finding is they're throwing us all in, in us. They're throwing us all in one big pile and writing us all off. Why are our youth not connecting with the need for Black History Month? It's like saturating, just, just over making it so big and so wide that, you know, people lose the interest to even want to distinguish okay this is what i should be looking at here versus that over there this is a distraction all right let's, let's go to a caller see what the caller has to say Come on now. call you live with the rockwell radio show who am i talking to yo this is daniel may representing from st louis missouri what's going on bro salute <laughs> salute there you may brother talk to us the man midwest it's minotaur in the house <laughs> does black history monster matter absolutely uh, yeah, definitely. 
Uh, the reason why is because we're not absolutely certain that black history is going to be held in the household or every household and to uh, to the requirements that's necessary. It's like this. Uh, let's just equate it to science, right? Okay. Scientists, they make strides and progress by analyzing and researching previous data and using that as a foundation or a springboard to advance current ways and actions and technology. Without the foundation, they have nothing to go on. They're walking in the dark. Hmm. Um, our history is the same. Um, on a personal note, okay. uh, it's like my brother and I fell out and we didn't like talk to each other for 20 years. Wow. We grew up, we got married, we started families and we didn't know each other's families until I decided, hey, you know what? It's time to bury the hatchet and surprise him for his 40th birthday. Okay. Got in touch with his girlfriend. She took him out to lunch. And the first people I met were his kids. Okay. And his kids had all these questions. You know, his daughter likes to run. I had to explain to her that, yeah, she likes to run because her grandmother ran track and okay. still holds uh, college records. Her, um, his son liked to play basketball. And I was like, well, your grandfather was all American in high school and college. But without these uh, tidbits of information, they wouldn't know that about themselves. Mm. Multiply those 20 years by 20 and you get 400 years of not knowing where you came oh. from. Come on, man. Now, mm. uh, all right. Now, I, I have another. Uh, yeah, I think it was a couple of days ago. That, uh, that Dave put the question up to his uh, up on his uh, Facebook page. Right. What you got, D, what and you he got? was asking whether or not. Yeah. So you know what I wrote was. <laughs> do tell. Do tell. Black History Month is like a minimum. Okay. Black History Month is like a minimum wage for Black History mm. in terms of white America's perspective. Chris Rock summed up minimum wage by saying, if I could pay you less, I would, but that would be against the law. Yeah, wow. Black History wow. Month, yeah. Yeah. Black History Month is what forces America's education systems to acknowledge the fact that black Americans were and are a race of innovators, thinkers, creators, and the foundation of this country's existence. Not just the images that anti-black propaganda campaigns implemented after slavery and are still using today. Um, regardless of white American sentiment, they would be forced to learn some of the names, albeit they too few, that have changed history and shaped the world around them. Black mm -hmm. History Month is more for the youth that is unaware mm -hmm. than for the, adult, the adults who still refuse to acknowledge it for what it is. It must also be remembered not all black Americans know their history still. And the children of those people rely on this minimum wage history to at least get them started. At one point, all of us were looking for the roots that were severed from us. This month is to inspire all to form a connection. So it isn't for those who already know. It's for their kids ah, and their parents who don't. That's the point. Gotcha. Well, 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 let me push back and ask this question just a little bit, Daniel. Uh, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Let's go back to our quote from earlier from the uh, writer from the Philadelphia Inquirer who stated this. What would be your response to the person that said black history is history, period. To treat it as anything separate is reductive and racist. We can rectify this disparity by canceling Black History Month. So in light of everything that you said, is the solution to cancel it? The solution, in my opinion, would to be enhanced it instead of canceling it. As I said before, if you don't know history or you don't know your history, whether it be your family's history, your people's history, you have no frame of reference that that um, comes in terms of not just habitual likes and dislikes, but potential ailments, potential diseases that you might be prey to. Um, all of these different things are, are relevant. It sounds to me as though we are still, well, some of us are still under uh, a social engineering that would force us mm. to say, hey, you know what? 
some of us are starting to make our uh, our lighter skin friends cringe. How about that? Of course, in the um, Black History Month uh, type of thing. Now, I know that's going to be uh, <clears throat> kind of sensitive to people who are sensitive, but... Um, <laughs> hey, we're not here to make people comfortable. There's a reason why. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's not. You know, it's just like it's just like okay, they're pushing Martin Luther King, but not John Henry Clark. Why is that? As KRS One would say. <laughs> absolutely, but absolutely. Anyway, well, yeah, all, all history is in, all history is important. Hmm. So you know what's up, brother D? Salute. You're welcome to call at any time. Salute. Peace. Thank you very much. I'm honored, man. Honored. Peace. Peace. Now he said, <laughs> uh, minimum wage, Black History Month is like minimum wage history. And everybody knows that minimum wage is not livable. It's not sufficient. <laughs> it's not sufficient to get us by. Who, who do you personally remember being um, championed as Black History heroes when you was coming up? That's such a big question. Because that is forcing me to look at my household, the household I grew up in and what was given to me, what was afforded to me. Um, I have to I have to tell the truth and say either I was too young to remember or I just didn't get from my parents, you know, the, the, the exposure to many of the black uh, personnel that were uh, of consequence. And until later in life that I began to get that hunger to go and get it for myself or I got, you know, some other influence, you know, mom and dad, they, they had to work. Right. Right. So, you know, there wasn't that that time put into. All right, Dave, I want you to read up on these people or here. Let's sit down and talk about this person, that person. And uh, these are your people. I want to connect you with their thoughts and their writings and so on and so forth. And, you know, now I'm, I'm getting that later in life. And, you know, by the grace of God, you know, we still have our father here and I can have those conversations with him. But, uh, you know, as a five, six, seven year old, you know, I, I wasn't wasn't privy to that. You know what? I'll never forget. Um, I always have to thank my father because it was him who shared with me us you may have been too young to remember this a book by henry hampton and steve fair the name of that book i gotta find it the name of that book no that's not it that's not it. the name of that book was voices of freedom it came out as a companion to the um, PBS broadcast Eyes on the Prize. It was through that book that led me to Malcolm X. It was through Malcolm X's autobiography that led me to Message to the Black Man. Right. The point I'm getting at here that there's a chain. So what or who is responsible or giving our children, like we saw in the earlier clip, who is responsible? Is the educational, um, uh, is the school system responsible for feeding our children black history? Too many cases, the, uh, the school system, you know, it gets laid at their feet, the uh, responsibility to do everything uh, I, would, I almost want to say short of uh, clothing our children, but in some cases, <laughs> some some teachers take it upon themselves to go that extra mile and, and do, you know, those things as well. But again, you know, mama got to work. Daddy may or may not be there. So, so where do they get time? Right. Let's, let's read this them. comment from Brother Derek. Derek Muhammad says this. It can be pacification if we try to keep white people comfortable the way we teach it. We've got to make sure our children know our history all day, a day. But why cancel it? How irrelevant is our value to this country 
that we built. Remember the shock after Michelle Obama mentioned that slaves built the White House? Absolutely. Absolutely. Peace, Brother James. Welcome to the conversation. You are tuned in to the Rockwell Radio Show, and we are posing the question right now, does Black History Month still matter? What say ye? Call in right now. Let's talk to you. I want to hear from you. Why is there apathy about Black History Month? Call us at 404-919-7399 or put a comment in the comment. We want to know from you, does Black History Month still matter? Are we failing our children in what or what we don't teach to our children about black history? Yeah, I want to read a statement from uh, one of my, my friends on Facebook. She says, I grew up in a small town in West Virginia, and I don't I don't take for granted one day of Black History Month. I don't take for granted any first a black person achieves because I know how hard you have to work to achieve it. I was amazed at how Atlanta black folks don't stick together more. Wow. She said we in our hometown uh, didn't have that option. So small there, there weren't all of the, you know, the spread out uh, factions of this group over here, that group of black people over there. Uh, we knew who we were. We knew what we had, what we didn't have and that we needed to stick together. So anytime. Uh, her sentiment was anytime, you know, something came up that was for us, we knew it was for us and we celebrated it. So the, the value in Black History Month, as she states, is very, very strong. And, you know, I think some of us, since we're in Atlanta, um, Atlanta is, of course, if I don't, I don't, don't quote me on this, but I think Atlanta is over 60 percent black. And I'm talking about just just the city alone. Um, and as you know, in the South, there's a high concentration of us. Is it possible that we take for granted? And I'm also asking you all at home watching this. I want you to comment and respond. Is it possible if you live in a major metropolis where there are a lot of us, is it possible that we take it for granted? Is it possible that we take each other for granted and there's not a necessity or a drive to learn? For example, the history of black migration from the South to the North. How do we get from Georgia to New York, Georgia, Georgia to Chicago, Mississippi to LA? Who's running away from that whip and that chain and that cotton? How about it? We need to know what happened, but why is it that so many of us are not interested to know what's the source of the apathy we want to hear from you but first before you do hit the like button hit the share button this is the rockwell radio show we're on every saturday at 7 p.m eastern time on youtube and facebook hit the like hit the share and above all subscribe because we got something interesting to talk about every single week so the question today is does black history still matter what do you say? Call us at 404-919-7399. You know, every time that I love to open up the phone lines, D, but I realize a lot of people are watching on their phones. So right. <laughs> for those of you who are, who are not watching on your phones, we want to hear from you. And you can also text your comment and we'll read your comment live on the air right about now. So let's go back. There's something else I want to examine. I want to examine something else the first author said. Where's that quote? Here it is over here. Melinda Anderson said this, and I thought it was very interesting. That Black History Month is still relevant with the gains made in race relations. And of course, she cited Obama being the most visible gain. And detractors charge it as detrimental as long as we pigeonhole the study of it to one month. How you got a daughter, I got a son. And I want to ask you at home too. I want you to think about this. How is the best way? What is the best way to continue the educational process, Big Dave? of black history to our children on March 1st. With children, with youth, 
we've got to find them find a way to get them physically involved there, need, there needs to be an activity beyond text beyond reading something or hearing something even seeing a movie there needs to be some way that an interest is sparked in them in us to to get involved and stay involved an activity where we can see all right this is the starting point this is the progress we've made because we followed steps a b c and wow okay we achieved this if you don't have that then you know that disconnect is, is going to remain that gap is going to continue to widen my my opinion what is the what's the downside what is what is the consequence if we took black history completely out of the curriculum even as faulty and incomplete as it is even as short as it is what's the consequence of completely stopping the teaching of black history month if black history month is the only time where black history is introduced to our, our children in school and they don't get it at home because we got to work we got to make this money and get these bills then they are left as you know fodder they're left as uh you know just fruit for the taking for anybody to continue to use and take advantage of for their purposes so there has to be something in place uh although i agree that black history month should not be boxed into this you know short few days uh it, it needs to be expanded it should not be done away with and and that's the sentiment of a lot of the people from the clips you've played that it needs to be year round it needs to be just all all history not just black black history you know, maybe maybe we can change names and call it something else but uh I don't take away black history add to it and okay now we'll talk about this part of world history american history uh, no, we, we can't exclude that because we'll continue to lose and fall further behind. Here's another frequently made comment by our white counterparts. We don't have white history month. What y'all need black history month for? We don't look at our history. Oh, they the victims again? <laughs> How'd that happen? So, what do you all say at home when you hear white people make that comment? Is that a checkmate comment? Is that a comment that makes you pause and say, well, maybe they're right. <laughs> of course, the response is we all got the rest of the year. Everything else right. is white history. Right. Let's go to the phone. What you got? Who you got called? This is DJ Rockwell. You're live on the Rockwell radio show. Who am I talking to? Black Dynamite, what's going on, brother DJ Rockwell? Black Dynamite, what's good with you, soldier? Man, y'all got a good, y'all got a good show going on, brother. I'm not really, and that music in that background is jam. Oh, brother, man, <laughs> see, you a music man, bro. You always been a music man. <laughs> oh man, yeah, so I was a DJ back in high school and college and everything. Yeah, so, you, know, you told me, you right, right. Got, so, so you got a great program, brother. Brother, we thank you, thank, thank, you, thank you for man. being here, big brother. So. Yeah. Which, yeah. which aspect do you want to comment on? What, what is Black History Month now out of here? Is is it is it irrelevant? Let me say this right here, brother. You know one thing about black folks, we are trendsetters, but we are temporary trendsetters. Okay. If you realize when the movie Black Panther came out, both a lot of us went in and bought a dark shoe. Right. Once the movie died down, once the movie died down, the dark shoe got put up. So, so it, it feel like it, it, even when the brother from San Francisco, the uh, the quarterback that got kicked off the team, Colin Kaepernick, Kaepernick, when he was when he was called back, Kaepernick, right? He had a dark chip, and we were back to black power again. You go further back when Malcolm X came out, we had the majority, we had the internet. We're trendsetters, so we don't we don't make a foundation. We just go, we just go with the trend. The last thing that I saw a uh, uh, black folk do is that when uh, the vice president. It was wearing the chuck 
in the pearl. Right. Man, that's gone. You know what I'm saying? So things, what, what we do, we're so trendsetters to where we don't realize that we're really not learning this. So we're just wearing the trend and then what about? We're going wow. to the next trend. Wow. So is, is so that... What, so what happened, oh, go ahead. And that's why and, and that, there's never a threat to the big man. Because he know he's he know he going to make money off our trend. We're aware, but now they know who's who been really been in print off of it. Wow. So history, so history's never been found. He it only temporary, and that's why we, that's why we talk about black history. It's temporary because once they were over with, which is a shorter month, we go into the spring. You know what spring goes in the spring, man. We become more of a fool hmm. because now, because when the weather's down south. We, we get a little more cold thinking out. Come on, brother. So is out the door. We, we come with the next train. When you're going into the department store, they're already picking out your clothes. <laughs> so a lot of us, so, right. so a, a lot of us, man, a lot of us, we get caught into tattoos. So now when it's, when it get hot, we want to expose tattoos. So we just, we never understand black history because it's only the trend for us. So at some point, when, when the foundation is really going to stick, and I tell you how it sticks, Come on. we got to catch a lot of hell. We got to catch a lot of hell. See, right, right now with the, with the prison that we got now, you don't go where we we back sleep again. We feel good going back to sleep. Listen, listen. But 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 but, but, we, but when you had the clown in president, we was aware. We was always going to the television, looking, you know, trying to see what he got to say. So we got we got to be whooping for submission. Wow, come on but, now. But when, we're, but, 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 but when we were sucking on the pacifier, getting no substance from it, then we feel good. So that's why black history, to a lot of us, man, it don't it don't really stick. Especially in Atlanta, Atlanta has so many diverse there. You, you, you talk about the gay community, right? You, you talk about the motorcycles, right? It's, it's everything in Atlanta. That's what we, Atlanta mm-hmm. is the apple of the eye. Come but on, the thing about sir. It, it's somebody controlling it. They it, it, it keep controlling it, so we really never can see what direction we're going. So does that mean it's worthy to be cut and done away with, though, as a history? I mean, as as a as a concept, should it be canceled? The only way it's going is the more hair, the more hair that we can. That's the only way it's going to stand. Mm. Because if you if, if you look at everything that involved last year, it came a movement from it. Right. But when they found a way to when they found a way to calm us down, then black history comes down. Mm. But, the, but the more the more we the more we get hair, the more we stand firm. There's a lot to be said for that. There's a lot to be said for that. Black Dynamite, man, brother, I always appreciate you for, for tuning in, for supporting, and for listening, brother. Share it, man. You my man. man and yes, sir. Come on, bro. Right, you know sir. what it is. Appreciate you, Black. Yes, sir, man. Yes, sir. Love you, brother. Love you, Love soldier. You. Malik Salam. Yes, sir. He makes a very, very significant point about popular culture. Mm-hmm. I was just talking about this today, about how the movie Wakanda and what it struck up in black people to go back and study. Let's go back to the phone line. You are live on the Rockwell Radio Show. Who am I talking to? Your long lost brother. Long lost brother. We're glad we found you. I'm sorry. I said, we're glad we found you, long lost brother. Peace, peace. Okay, you're a little clearer now. Please, black man, go right ahead. I believe the question was, is Black History Month still relevant, sir? Co- correct. Yes, sir. My question is, what Black History Month are we referring to? Ah. Go on. Our Black History Month is so diluted with the fake state individuals who they want to see. Not by, are we talking about the lost and found nation? Black History Month, the true tribe of the past, the children of Israel tribe of the past. Yes, sir. Those who believe in God. Or are we talking about those that came after? Hmm. Okay. So I see your distinction. Go on. My, 
right now America, and I believe our minister said, made mention of, and I think he may have said in the year 2000 some years ago, America will be a bunch of nations. That's correct. It's a melting. So what black are we talking about? Are we talking about the blacks that were formerly the members of transatlantic slave or currently transcendent of slave? Or are we talking about those that came out? Hmm. I would say here's my my thought and my response to your thought. There seems to be an apathy and a lack of interest for what happened to us pre-1555 and post-1555. And the question yeah. then becomes whose fault is that? Who we have to hold the bag ultimately. I'm sure most will agree with that. And we have to look at those who are, are, are apathetic and cynical and critical of Black History Month. We have to look at their, their, yeah. their, their question and say, okay, you may have a valid point. Do you think that their point for, for criticizing it isn't valid? It's valid. However, let's go back to they want to check their pedigree, their resume, ah. and identify what they are, where they come from, and what right do they have to challenge or to question or to criticize. Hmm. Is is there a singular answer to this question in your mind? Do, is 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 it a black and white solution where it's either yay nay? Uh, in, out, it was, yes, no? Because of the righteousness of the true believers of God, the true God, the one true God, it can't be. Mm. We're, we're taught to love humanity. Right. We're taught to treat you as one. It, so every day, every month, is like this. Facts. I Facts. think there was a song back in the early 2000s with Trick Daddy. You you know Trick Daddy. Come on now. He don't know now. Trick Daddy said all that walking that man did he only gave him one day out of one month and one month. Let's be mindful that he comes from a very, very, very great dynasty. Genetically. He has formed and shaped Inside is optimal as we are doing now. Right. So give us one month. It's not sufficient. I think the minister had a speech that he did one time when he asked the people to add it up. Add it up. Our constitution is not just our particular I remember that lecture. It's managed. It's managed. Hmm. It's been great talking to you, sir. Brother, I could hear, and I'm hoping that our audience could hear everything you said. It's a little cloudy, uh, but I got the main points of what our brother said. Did you hear everything our brother said? I got most of it, yeah. Brother, I, I wish you'd call back on a clearer they, line so, I, so we can hear every word you said. But, brother, I, but I said, I wish, I wish the line was a little more clear so we and our audience can hear every word, but I think what you said was clear enough to make the point. God willing, it was, and I pray that God speak and blessings be upon you and all of your listeners, sir. Love you, big brother. Call in anytime, black man. Likewise, we'll do one. Salam alaikum. I tell you what, his voice was so cloudy. I got mixed perceptions of who I was talking to. <laughs> but, but I think I know who that was. And um, brother told an uh, uh, absolute truth that we have to look at both sides of post-slavery history and pre-history, excuse me, pre-slavery history. Which one are we talking about? Now, now you, 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 Barking up a tree there with that one pre-slavery history. We we were something before we were slaves. What were we? 
How about that? Uh, and if adults can't answer that question, what about our children? If they think that their history starts on the the the, the Nina, the the the, the 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 three ships, if they think that black people didn't exist before they landed on Plymouth Rock, we are in a hell of a situation. We sprung out of the ground. You are listening to the Rockwell Radio Show, and I'm telling you right now, um, I, saw, I see Brother Michael got a comment on the screen that we left there. Um, we want to take just a few more calls before we wrap up. We want to take a few more calls. Call us at 404-919-7399. Again, that's 404-919-7399. This is DJ Rockwell. And Dave C. And you're tuned in to the Rockwell Radio Show. We're here every single Saturday at 7 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Central, 4 p.m. out on the West Coast. And um, what would you add to the curriculum? If we're going to discuss this purely from an academic standpoint, whether at home or in the school, what should be added to the equation? But that, that last point, uh, pre-slavery history, you know, that, that peaks, that pulls at me a bit. Uh, if you really look at it, there's no way possible that colonizers came to America, left America on a ship, went to Africa, got us. We over here in America, not speaking their language, living different lives completely, and we did all of the things that we did. We built, we farmed, we, you know, reared their children, all of those things. There's no way possible that they taught us, quote unquote, to do those things. Come on. And we had no history of, of such prior to becoming slaves in this land. There has to be a, a thorough looking into who we were prior to coming to these shores. Because, you know, going into that, that's going to step on some toes, some ankles and some knees and up higher. I heard the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan say this. They didn't come get us because we were stupid. Oh, come on. <laughs> they didn't come to Africa and kidnap us because we were worthless and lazy. They realized that we was builders. They realized that we were people who build entire dynasties. And they threw us in the hole in 1555 and we landed on these shores. Yes, 1555. Yep. Study that. And they brought us to these shores. And now, isn't it ironic that black people have the uh, stigma of being called lazy? So we want to ask you in close. We're at the end of the show, by the way. What are the last two minutes of the show? Before we go, Big Dave, I want to ask you out there, put in the comment section, and this won't be perhaps for this episode, but for people who come behind and watch this in the future, I want you to add a suggested reading list. I want everybody who's watching to put in the comment section a book that Black people should be reading to widen and deepen their knowledge about our history. Everybody in the chat room, name one book. If you know more, add more. Dave, give me one book. Before anybody else beat me to it, Message to the Black Man by the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I'm going to add one to it. I want everyone to go look at we were before the Mayflower. I want to add another one to it. From Niggas to Gods by Kiel. I want you all to keep going in the chat room. Everybody list a book. There's so many we can name, but we want the people who come after the show is over to read the comments to get a wealth of information that yo, we at the Rockwell radio show, yo, their listeners are even smart. 
because they recommended something that changed my life. So as we wind up, Dave, closing thoughts on the question. I want to pull just a piece of a quote from one of our great supporters, uh, Kenrick Richardson. He's he states uh, on Facebook, since the beginning of time, cultures have passed down and given attention to their history, their history. And you hear in plenty of places around the world, the, the tradition or the practice of oral history being passed down. Right. It's always that people passing on their history. So I, I don't know why I do know, but I'll say I don't know why there's such a, a raucous raised when we have an interest and, and recognize the need for black history to be passed on far and wide, even if it's not given to, you know, other nationalities, other cultures, it needs to be given to black children must be. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters. This is episode 19 where we ask the question. And again, we didn't necessarily answer the question. Does black history still matter? I think the answer is an obvious yes. The critics have their point. They raised a significant argument. But it's upon us to make Black History Month a 12-month engagement. It's on me. It's on you. And most importantly, it's on you. What are you going to do going forward? Who are you going to teach? The most honorable Elijah Muhammad told us that it's on us. Each one teach how many? So that's it. And before we go, salute. Happy Black History Month. Happy God History Month. Because studying of yourself is the study of God. Keep on listing those books before we go. Hey, what's some of these books before we go? God, the Black Man and the Truth by Ben Ami. I remember that. One. I wrote, yo, don't read. What else you got? <laughs> Post Traumatic Slave Syndrome, book by uh, Joy DeGray. Uh, what else we got? Destruction of Black Civilization. Come on now. Uh, yeah, they, they throwing them up here, man. Black Indians. Uh, where did I get that one? Come on now. Keep You all keep yeah. listing them. Keep <laughs> listing them. But this is DJ Rockwell and Big Dave C. And we are out of here. We will see y'all next week. And Dave, here we go. Ready to know We out. <laughs> Rock well, well, well. I like well, to know. Well. Are you really ready for some super dynamite soul? soul.